people in particular, the, the, the chattier space taker upper people, should do a lot more listening. And I think that that's, that's the thing that we have to recognize in education technology, is that there are certain voices that are always heard. Those voices are t attached to certain bodies oftentimes who, no matter where you go, they're the voices who are giving sessions, they're the voices who are presenting things, they're the voices who are sort of leading the discussion down certain paths. And I think it's um, important to sort of recognize when they've had their turn to speak, they need to shut up and let other, p other voices be heard. And I mean, I would probably phrase it more nicely than you need to shut up. Um, although with some people, I might <laughs> say that. I mean, I think, and I think that that's, you know, I think that that's, that's often, that's I think the first step and it's a, it's a, it's actually a really difficult step for people to sort of recognize that they take up a lot of space and that they need to spend a lot more time listening to other people. That their thing isn't, their thing isn't the only thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier in your presentation, like the fear of like publishing a blog post. And yeah. Really questioning, like, do I really know anything? Because it's one thing if someone harasses like you, and it's not okay. I'm just saying, but it's one thing if someone harasses you and like sends you a death threat. But it's another thing if someone harasses like your intellect and your perspective. And like, I know you have like merits and things like that, but I just like graduated high school. Like, I can't really. <laughs> I just, I wonder, so you wonder sometimes, like, maybe I don't know anything, like, I don't know. Oh, I don't know anything. Like, I make up everything. Like, I'm so full of shit. Like, like, really. And I'm, but I'm actually pretty, I would be pretty happy for people to call me out on my ideas because, like, honestly, I would love to, like, have discussions and debates um, with, with people about the merits of ideas, right? But what happens really quickly is that it becomes less about the merits of the ideas and more about other weirdness as well. Um, I think that, you know, I mean, I think that that's actually one of the, the positive things about being able to publish our work online is that we do, ideally in a perfect world, get feedback from people, from people who can say, wow, that's like, have you read this other book? That's a really great insight. I'm totally stealing your idea. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, um, right, uh, the, or, you know, that we are able to engage with ideas together online outside our, you know, outside our face-to-face our face-to-face -face, um, interactions. I think that learning in particular is a really vulnerable position, right? The process of learning does mean saying like, I don't know this thing. Like, I don't know this thing and that's okay because I'm gonna like work through it. But it is, it is a it's a vulnerable thing and it's even more, I think, intimidating to, to sort of do that vulnerability on the internet. It's one thing to sit in a class and realize you're like, wow, everyone else is like, smart and um, they did the reading <laughs> and I didn't um, but it's something else to like do that thing online is is really scary which means you should probably do the reading you know but um, no I, t I totally I totally understand I, I think that like that's why we have to have more compassionate spaces so that when you post something online it's not as though that there are like sharks just waiting to like gobble you up and like destroy you we should be like yay <laughs> Um, I think the solution would be to have more women in the workplace. I don't think that that's necessarily going to make everything um, wonderful. I mean, the perfect example of this is, you know, Margaret Thatcher was the leader of England, and it's not as though she was ever such a wonderful lady for women's rights. Um, no, I think that the answer is to have women there because, we, like, women are or in, in diverse voices because we ask the questions that um, we raise the issues that just aren't seen. One of the things that's amazing to me is that Apple came out with this new health app, right? That's like auto installed on your phone and you can't delete. But they thought that it would be great if you could track all the things you'd want to track in order to be a healthy person, right? Like how much iron your iron intake, how many stairs you went up and down, 
why don't you weigh your body mass. The sorts of things that you know, people who are sort of into fitness tracking would want to track that didn't include the menstrual cycle which, you know, many women actually download apps to be able to track, track that sort of thing. I can guarantee you there was, it was all dudes on the health kit app building session because women would have said, you know what, you know what ladies like to track? <laughs> Maybe we should include that. And so I think that those, I mean, like those, that's a, might sound like a little thing, but I think it's things like that that get missed all the time when we don't have when we don't have diverse voices building a diverse people, a diverse set of bodies and voices at the table building technologies. The things that are like, oh yeah, duh, like, oh yeah, we, we've totally, <laughs> we totally should have included that because you have a set of a sort of same group of people with the same sort of sets of circumstances that just don't, they just don't think about it. So I think, I mean, I, I do think that, you know, a nice, set of diversity training would be great for Twitter engineers. But I think having more women work at Twitter in the engineering department is probably our best bet. Um, so the history of computers is really interesting. Um, you know, the, the first computers were women, right? That, the word computer was used for the women who did sort of cleric, the clerical input putting of, of work into these machines that we eventually <coughs> called computers. And in fact, for a very long time, women participated in computer science. Um, Admiral Great, Rear Admiral Grace Hopper, for example, um, invented um, COBOL. Uh, women have contributed, the first computer programmer was a woman. Women have contributed and been part of technology or computing technology for a really long time until the 80s when suddenly the number of women who were getting degrees in the field and pursuing the field sort of drastically fell off. Um, and I think that in Silicon Valley in particular, people get hired from within networks. Um, I think that people just, um, people in power that are making hiring decisions are looking for certain things and not recognizing that what they're sort of doing the pattern matching where um, investors said, I would invest with, I heard an investor say, I would invest in anyone that looked like Mark Zuckerberg. I'm like, what the hell is that? Like a blonde kid that wears a hoodie and sandals, like really, like that's your standard of investing in people. But I think that that's the thing is like, you know, I know a good engineer when I see him, he looks like this. I'm like, oh, he does. Interesting. So I think that you know, women have have been in technology. I think that just um, we have to work a lot harder now on a diversity issue because women have left and women leave the profession in droves because it is sort of it's sort of um, an unpleasant place, unfortunately, it's unpleasant to work in technology. Now, I mean, if you're going into technology as a woman, I mean, I totally support you and I'll have your back, I'll write you letters of recommendation, like you can call me and like, I'll like walk you through difficult times, but yeah, women leave the profession um, in droves. Mm -hmm. So even when you go into the classroom and look at teacher time studies in males and females, it's the same amount of time, but there's subtle differences, right? Right. And so when you think about driving women who make their way up to the career path into senior positions where they have power and you know, autonomy and they can run companies, has there been any way to start thinking about looking at the pathways that women take? Because I know when you start looking at women in the corporate directory and see the hierarchical types, you can identify dead end jobs. But you're always, like you're noticed, like this is a job open for the promotion. No, don't take it. It's not a promotion because any woman who goes in this position never gets out of that slot. Have we started to do that kind of work and kind of? 
Um, I think that it's, I think that there's some of that, com some of those conversations. I think that the, that the challenges as well are that the, the, the work culture, and again, I'm talking about the work culture of Silicon Valley, like particularly Silicon Valley startups, is so antithetical to leading like a sane and healthy human life that it makes it very difficult for people who have families, and I don't just mean women, I mean men or women that have families to participate in that world. Um, it makes it like people work ungodly amounts of hours expected to the, not, I mean, and not just sort of CEOs. I'm sure Mark Zuckerberg does not work ungodly hours. I'm sure he, he for his dollar paycheck, I'm sure he does about a dollar's worth of work. Um, but um, no, I'm sure he does great stuff. Um, <laughs> but I think that that culture is really not a place that's welcoming to family life. And I think that it's really challenging for women in particular to find, to find their way through that. Um, and I think that the, that the culture more broadly in the tech sector still tends to be something that rewards certain behaviors and people that look a certain way and have their lives organized in a certain way. Um, and I think that even, you know, even efforts like Sheryl Sandberg, for example, at Facebook, um, her efforts to sort of talk about lean in Right, her thing, it sort of feels like a very, like her work sort of feels like a very, um, again, it's a c incumbent upon women making their own change to make the f make work, make their own career paths different rather than addressing sort of um, systemic, systematic biases. And, and it's, I think Sheryl Sandberg's story in particular um, sort of is very much about what, about what white womanhood invokes and it doesn't really sort of recognize how that story look, might look very, very different for women of color. So that, I don't know if that answered your question. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. Broader questions about notions of identity that are kind of forming this, not only culturally, you know, but well, I guess culturally, but also virtually in relationship to that, that we haven't really wrapped our head around and we're struggling with. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think that in some ways, this that that sort of this notion of a of a virtual self where we can um, where we can sort of sever that from our physical world. To me, I'm not like it reminds me sort of of the work that um, of Catherine Hale, right? And like, there's this idea of like artificial intelligence of being that, right? That somehow we can take, um, we can sort of take what is a human intellect and then augment that virtually um, through through machines. And I'm just not sure that the self is ever separate. Sep we can ever sort of separate from the body. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, the, the idea of sort of the singularity where, where we eventually all get to be only digital, we get to sort of upload our consciousness into Google, I guess, um, is, is something that seems to me like very much a, f a fantasy of folks who haven't spent a lot of time recognizing the materiality of their, of their existence. Um, and I'm just not, sh I'm not, I'm not sure that, that there is that sever between the digital and the not, you know, I think that it's all us. I think that the virtual selves are still an extension of us. Even if we play with different identities, I think it is still, 
it is still us in our, in our, physical, in our physical selves on the keyboard for starters, right? Yeah. I didn't mean to shoot you down there, but I totally did. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are my favorite. <laughs>